Mission arm is asking. Okay, I'm going to get the pro. Now think about it. When you're on the moon with a rocket that's going to take you home, there's several things that are really important. Three, two, one. The first thing is that you want your fuel and the oxidizer to react. You don't want to have to get out of the rocket and start lighting matches in the hope that the thing is going to react. You then also want to make sure that when it reacts, it reacts with a lot of energy. Ignition. Right away, Houston. That's your grid. So we prepare for firing by closing the second vessel, retreating to a safe distance, and opening the switch. Chemistry from developed here at Nottingham has a direct connection with the landing on the moon that we're all celebrating this weekend. Are we go or no go for launch? No, all right, my go. Systems are go. So this is a um, master's thesis, which I just got hold of a few minutes ago. And I think that it contains a reference to the chemistry that brought Armstrong and Aldrin back from the moon. Th this um, dissertation was written by a student called Ray Thompson, who was a student here from the 1940s. He began here, I think, in 1947 or 48. This type of chemical reaction, a hypergolic chemical reaction, was the rocket fuel used in the Apollo program. So as you can see, one of our workshop technicians many years ago has made here at the University of Nottingham's own Apollo spacecraft. And essentially there's a rocket motor and a jet. This <coughs> thesis is about the reactions of a molecule N2O4. Two nitrogen atoms, four oxygen atoms, joined by a very long bond. Now we need to charge both our fuel and our oxidant into the fuel tanks and the oxidant tanks before we start our chemical reaction. N2O4 is quite an unusual molecule. It's a rather sort of colourless liquid, slightly green uh, or brown, greenish brown. So first we're going to put in the oxidant. This is the N2O4 and the N2O4 is a gas and we're going to condense it into a cold or a pre-cooled vessel before pouring it into our fuel tank. When it vaporises, it falls in apart into two pieces, NO2, which is dark, which are dark brown gas. So you have this liquid with a dark brown gas above it. You can see the orange liquid with the vapour above. Now it's very volatile, it boils at 21 degrees C, so we have to keep it cold, and we put it into the reaction chamber. And the point about it is that it has very weak bonds, which makes it very reactive, because when it reacts, it produces N2, nitrogen. And N2 has the strongest bond between any two atoms that exists. So when N2O4 reacts, it releases a huge amount of heat. So the source of fuel is the asymmetric dimethyl hydrazine. And so what Ray Thompson discovered, I think almost by chance as a tiny bit of this report, is shown in one of the papers that he bound in here. And he did some reactions which legend says, and I don't know if it's true, ended in quite a serious explosion. And because he writes in this paper here, which was in the um, journal Nature, which is one of the most prestigious journals you can write in, he said both ammonia and diethylamine, which contains NH bonds, react explosively with it, N2O4. So we prepare for firing by closing the second vessel, retreating to a safe distance, and opening the switch. So, as you can see, upon mixing the two hypergolic mixtures, 
an instantaneous exothermic reaction with a rapid amount of thrust with the small gases and vapor rushing from the bottom of the rocket. So, a great way to get the Apollo spacecraft back off the moon without having to use an external ignition source, which could go wrong. Three, two, one. Zero. This is the other What a liftoff. And liftoff. Roger, ignition. I always feel a warm feeling with every time I talk about N204 because I think of the connection between my colleagues here in Nottingham and the astronauts coming safely back from the moon. Though I'm not sure when they were sitting in the lunar module that they knew the chemistry had originated in an explosion in Nottingham. <laughs>